Welcome to the Power of Offense with Keith and Rodney. And today we have a really good one for y'all now. I got to give you all a disclaimer, all right? I got to give all you fellas a disclaimer. I watch female shows, all right? Now, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. I'm going to go more in, in detail about this in another video. But just to sum it up, I watch this stuff with my wife, all right? Now, I think it's a good thing because I'm able to bring you all some, some clips, right, that most brothers is not able to bring because they don't watch it. Am I right, Rodney? Absolutely. I don't watch that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I got a clip right here. That Now, this clip came from a show that comes on Bravo. Now, this is the same network that the Housewives shows come on. And this particular show is called Married to Medicine. All right, so right here. Now, now let me frame this for you. It's a, it's, a, it's a married couple. You got Dr. Damon and Dr. Heavenly. Both of them are doctors, and they're having dinner with their children. All right. And we want to discuss what they're talking about after we watch this clip. So fair use, fair use. Go ahead and help yourself get your food. You like the food, buddy? It's good. <laughs> Man, that food do look good. Yeah, it's too much meat. That shit make them stupid. That's why they stupid. Look at all that meat on that motherfucking table. They don't realize that meat, the meat slow down your connection to the universe, which is why they got religion in that joint. Go ahead. That joint do look good. Hey, hey, Roddy. It looked like <laughs> it looked like that Peruvian chicken, man. Yeah. That's what it looked like. Yeah. But yeah, let's keep going. Did you eat like a dang animal? Come on, baby. <laughs> so you know we just got back from DC, right? Mm-hmm. How was that? Now now. I just want to say this real quick too, Rodney. We got to stop right here. Now, this reminds me of my childhood. The reason why I'm saying this is because my parents used to require that my siblings and I all sat down for Sunday dinner. We used to do the same thing. You know what I mean? And I think more black families, if you're not doing it, we need to get back to this. So I yeah. think this is a good thing. And yeah, I just want to say right that. there. That's key right there because although, although my dad died young, we we always ate dinner uh, every day. <laughs> not yeah, just, yeah. Not just one day. And we went to our grandma's house. Everybody sat down, and did all that, did the same exact thing. So that creates communication with the family, and it creates um, a bond, a family yes. bond that most of us don't have now. Because if you look at today's society, uh, every, some most people eat in their rooms or they eat at different times. You know, the system of racism and white supremacy got everybody scattered. So right. that that breaks the family up. But go ahead. Yeah. All right. All the stuff we've done, that was probably the most meaningful to me. The people that we tested could have helped hundreds, if not thousands, not get the disease. Then the fact that we talked to Reverend Al Sharpton and Ben Crump. You know who that is? That's the attorney for George Floyd and wow. Breonna Taylor. Yeah. The coolest part about the whole Black Lives Matter movement is that he's, he's starting to see like, People that you didn't think were on your side it are on your side, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. This has been going on for a really long time. When it happened to me, I knocked over a sign on the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. And so we were just walking along, and all of a sudden, a security guard right. came running up on us, and he was like, hey, you got to come back with me. And I was like, I'm sorry, but I'm just not going to go back. So he Now, I want to stop right there, Rodney, because this is the part of what I wanted to talk about, because to me, right now, I like Dr. Damien. I do. But I feel like he's giving his children horrible advice right here. Now, the fact he just said that he knocked over a sign, the security guard came out and told him, you got to come with me. Of course, the security guard is going to say that because you damage property. That's somebody's property. So somebody got to pay to fix that, which would be the individual that damaged it, which was him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, now to me, now, now, now I'm gonna keep going. And, and, and I'm going to the dialogue more of why I'm saying what I'm saying. He grabbed me. He didn't let me go. And so we fought. And then mm -hmm. that's when the real cops came and, and put his gun to my head. He put his gun to my head and said, what are you going to do? It was a long oh, time ago, buddy. Don't get yeah, upset about that dang right. girl. I mean, mm -hmm. like, it was terrible, you know, like, it wasn't right for me to do that. I should have just kept walking, regardless of what he said. Mm. And see, I got to stop because I disagree with that, Rodney. I, now, 
to me, what he should have did was he should have stopped and talked to him again. You damaged property, man. You should have stopped and talked to him. The only reason it, it escalated, in my opinion, is because he started fighting the security guard. So, of course, the police are going to get called and they're going to come and they're going to deal with you as an aggressive assailant. And they're going to do that because of the the uh, the, the actions that he that he um the uh, actions that he he committed or shall i say shown against the security guard but let's keep going i just don't like that they try to antagonize it sometimes like it sounds like like they like trying to like bully and take advantage of somebody that like is no different from you he's a person it's a person yeah you knocked over a sign and you put a gun to your head i don't you know they that's didn't not go together that's Daddy, like, please don't say you were wrong because you weren't you you did something to like you know make that situation come up but you weren't it's not worth your life at all, you know? My sons are similar, but they're also different in certain ways. Zachary's a real cool-headed guy. He's just a laid-back person that always keeps us calm. And Damon, he's more like I was back then and will react to things. Had you went to jail, right, off of something little and stupid like that, you would have been in the system. And in some states, they make it so you can't vote. You can't and then you can't school. go to school. You can't get an SBA loan. So the little things that... Now, that would only happen if it was a felony. You know what I'm saying? Now, if he was charged with a felony of maliciously destroying property and, and he was convicted of that or pleaded guilty, then yes, that's true with what they just what she just said as far as voting and 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 potentially even buying a firearm. So that that is true. You know what I'm saying? But the point that I'm trying to raise is to me, right? He was wrong. He escalated the situation when he started fighting the security guard. All he had to do is just go back and tell him, look. It was a mistake. You know what I mean? I was playing around, made a mistake, et cetera, et cetera. I guarantee you it could have got worked out easily. That's the point I'm trying to make. And to me, this is bad advice. Now, what's your take on it, Rodney? Yeah, yeah um, I agree with what you're saying. He said he knocked the sign down. Like, I, I, we don't know if he broke the sign or revenue. You know, sometimes, did he say that he was at the broad, the, like a boardwalk? Yes. Okay, so so I'm imagining like a boardwalk, like at Rehoboth Beach, that's the beach that I go to. Some of those signs are like those, um, the, um, it's set up like this, like the little uh, construction signs. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So did he knock that down or did he or did he break something? You know, and then and then who threw the first punch? <laughs> you know, you well, know what well, I'm saying? But see, that's a good question. But, but see, I, I gotta say this, check this out, Rodney. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, right, you could catch more bees with honey than vinegar if he would have just the security guard came off he would have just told him like look man yeah you know my my bad and like you said we don't know whether it was broken or not and, and, and let's just assume that it wasn't broken let's assume it was one of the signs that he didn't break right mm -hmm. he could easily put it back <laughs> you know what i'm saying or if he did break at it, least he right, could at, at least, least. yeah he could but at least try to walk back. away he escalated it that's the point i'm trying to make and, 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 and to I, me we don't need young black men doing this because this is why a lot of them are getting shot. Now, yeah, we can we can say that the cop, it was it seemed a little excessive for him to put the gun to him. We can say that. But again, why are we putting ourselves in situations where these type of things can potentially happen? I'm trying to get us to avoid it. And most people don't really uh, respect security guards. Right. So in, in order for all, like, he, like, I think he said it that he shouldn't even have stopped. Yeah. She kept going. When the guy said something, she would say, fuck him, I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? So by the time he did anything, called the police, that wouldn't have happened. So, he, so I think he was wrong on two points. One, he either should have went back and uh, and, and and dealt with it, or he should have just kept going. Yeah, Period. you right. Not respond, not nothing. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those, those were the two things that wouldn't have got the gun put at his head. I think he's kind of making it more dramatic than it actually is whenever whenever it's uh, partially his fault because he had two avenues to get rid of it. Either go back and apologize like you suggest or say fuck him like I suggest and say keep, and keep it moving. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now I'm assuming, right, that he was chunky when he was younger. Now, I could be wrong, but he may have been, right? Now, I wasn't. I wasn't chunky when I was a teenager. However, I, I still wasn't a fast runner. You know what I'm saying? I've never been that 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 fast of a runner. So I would I would have rather talked about it because if I'd have ran, I might have gotten caught. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That if you're that I fast. I, I was chunky as a, as a kid, teenager. 
Yeah. But I still would have been out. <laughs> he would have to catch me. Or I just play depending on the situation. You know, if it's something yeah. that I broke, you, you know what I'm saying, I probably would have stayed there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because the chances of getting caught and being reported to my mother, something like that, that's almost worse. Yeah. <laughs> the police officer coming putting the gun in your head. You know, you know, so absolutely. Yeah, so it was a it was a quite a few um ways that he could have handled this differently. Absolutely. Now now I wanna I wanna show this uh case though, Rodney, that I found. Because you know how we do it at the power of offense. You know, we uh, entertain all of our listeners with uh, legal commentary from a layman's point of view. You know what I'm saying? And we always provide evidence to support our opinions of things. You know what I'm saying? So we don't just give people our bare assertions or, or, or opinions. We always provide evidence to support why we're saying what we're saying. Right? Because this exactly. is a teachable moment. Exactly. We, we we do one or two things. We either provide the... Uh, the evidence, like you're saying, or we're speaking from experience, which is still exactly. evidence. You know what I'm saying? But yep. as far as an opinion supported by nothing, that's what we do not do. Unless we tell you this is our opinion, take it with a grain of salt. Exactly. Exactly. So here we go, y'all. Check this out. All right, I have a case. It's it's uh, Terry versus Ohio, and this was issued by the Federal Supreme Court in 1968. Now, we're not going to read the whole case for the sake of time. I just wanted to deal with the primary holding of the case. So the court said that under the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, so that's that's the supreme law of the land, under the Fourth Amendment, a police officer may stop a suspect on the street and frisk him or her without probable cause to arrest if the officer has a reasonable suspicion that the person has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a crime and has reasonable belief that the person may be armed and presently dangerous. Now, in this particular case that we just discussed concerning Dr. Damon, right, when he hit that sign, right, he committed a crime. Now, the crime would be destruction of property, assuming that this sign was damaged. But just the fact that he knocked it down and it hit the ground, it is, I can understand why the security guard would stop him. Yeah, you, know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm you don't knock nobody you don't you don't because damage is is one thing but you can't i don't think you can alter anybody's uh property you, 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 you know what i'm saying like knock the, even if you didn't break it you can't knock it down whether you did it by accident or not so if you did it by accident he know that he, he knew that he knocked it down and should have did something but if exactly. you damage it that's even worse See, i don't think you can alter anyone's property without at least apologizing so i totally agree Absolutely. Now, any last thoughts, Rodney? Well, the main thing that, that the reason why we brought this up is just like you said, we're trying to protect or give our, our young brothers and sisters an alternative way of thinking when you're dealing in the public. You know, yes. we already know how the police are treating people who look like us. You, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and just like the people treat us, just like the police treat us that way, citizens know police treat us that way. So, therefore, they can easily put us under, under, um, under, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? In, in arms way. Yes. You know what I'm saying? By just saying, just, just like it was a, it was a, a few, I might have been a year ago, where, where the brother was videotaping the lady and the lady was saying, calling the police officer, I mean, calling the police, say, it was a large black man intimidating. You know what I'm saying? That's an example. Mm-hmm. You remember that video? Yes, where, where, where the guy was mm-hmm. videotaping, say nothing that she was saying was actually happening, but the way she was describing it could have got him killed. Yeah, you that know was what in uh, so New even York. Though that the police officers uh, latch on to us in a way that's that's that that's 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 not normal. You know, the citizens know that, and they use it to their advantage. And that was a prime example. So you don't you want you you don't want to put yourself in that position to be in arms way to be murdered by accident. Absolutely, absolutely. So y'all, please leave us comments in the comment section. Let us know what you think. Please share, like, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.